YouTube friends, Ben Ochart here, coming to you from beautiful Southern California. How's this for November weather? Absolutely gorgeous. At any rate, I want to share with you some of the things that I do with uh, a hang-on back filter. I don't, I haven't talked much about hang-on back filters. I use two of them, one in the 60, 60 gallon grow out, and one in um, on my 30 gallon uh, quarantine tank. So let's take a look at what I do with hang-on back filters, and then certainly I want to hear from you. Comment below, share, and let me know what you do with hang-on back filters that might be a little different or similar to what I'm doing. All right? So thank you so much for tuning in, my friend. Let's get right to it. This is a Marineland Emperor 400. It's a dual bio wheel that uh, was included in the purchase of an old 135 uh, that I used to run and a 135 gallon tank that I bought. Uh, it sat around for a long time, but I plugged it in and it just fired right up and it's been quietly and very strongly doing its job on this 60 gallon. It creates a lot of water movement, which I love, and it runs strong and silent and requires very little maintenance, really. Uh, normally, uh, I would suggest that you leave your hang on back filters alone unless they are showing you that they need maintenance and I'll tell you what I mean by that. Every hang on back filter has a section on it that shows you that it's being blocked and by that what I mean is it'll show you with water flowing down a channel as you can see here a channel that it is not intended to run down so only when I see water flowing down those channels do I do maintenance on this hang on back filter. This applies to really any HOB. These, um, these bio wheels, because they have access to a lot of oxygen as they rotate and drain water, are supposed to be excellent for making biological bacteria. Uh, people debate back and forth whether or not that's the case. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me. I, uh, I stack this filter with extra bio media, as I'll show you in a second. Working on the filter is very, very easy. All you do is remove the lid, which comes off as just one entire piece, set it aside, and you have now access to uh, everything that goes inside the back of this filter. Uh, in my case, uh, what I stuff back here is uh, very different from what you would see traditionally in this kind of a filter. The, um, the bio media I have in here are CNZ bio balls. I talk about them in a uh, in a video that I released on on filter media. I'll include a link below on that filter. But I think these uh, for the money are a good deal. They're essentially uh, plastic bio balls that are full of sponge uh, sponge balls, and uh, you can find these on eBay, on Amazon, just about anywhere. Like anything else, shop around. I've seen them marked at uh, wide, a wide variety of prices. CNZ, like so many things, probably just made in China, uh, but they do the job. They they give a lot of surface, um, you know, a lot of surface availability for biological media to grow on. You just dump them in a little bit of tank water, which I've uh, put into this bowl here and that's about all you need to do to uh, service that biological media. I also have inside of this filter in an in a, um, aftermarket cartridge that you can pick up again on the internet. Here's a, a picture of one. Penguin of course makes them so you can buy one that's uh, by the manufacturer. You can buy an aftermarket and uh, you can see here very inexpensive. So I buy these cartridges and I load them up with uh, pinky floss and the pinky floss will take the water and uh, really polish and filter it before that water runs over the biological media. As you can see here the uh, pinky is doing a uh, it's doing a real good job. It hits the coarse white portion of the filter first. As you can see the by the discoloration the amount of detritus that it's that it's picked up and taken out of the water and then it hits the finer pink floss before running the water over the biological media and having the water return to the tank. I uh, custom cut pieces of pinky 
and put them into the cartridges pink facing the tank and I simply drop them into the back slot in the filter so that the water goes through the pinky first and then goes over my biological over the CNZ bio balls. I stuff them in there and then I go ahead and just cap them off with a piece of sponge just to make sure that I, I'm able to capture anything that might be uh, trying to get back into my tank. I repeat the process for the other side of the filter and uh, and now I have a serviced filter. Very rare that I'll actually take the filter off the back and scrub it down. I really don't care much about doing that. And as you can see here, the filter is serviced, the water flow is strong, the wheels are turning, and uh, I'm, I've got the lid back on and this filter is good to go. And as you can see, it is creating a lot of uh, surface agitation a lot of breakup of surface tension, which uh, of course helps to create gas exchange and oxygenate the water. Hey, that's it on, uh, on hang on back filters. But let me share with you a uh, tweak, a little, uh, a little modification that I did recently with the, with the sump on the 150 gallon. Tell me what you think. It's made life a lot easier and a little quieter for me. <laughs> I went on the internet and I located the distributor of Rio, Rio pumps. And I was able to purchase from them for like 10 bucks, a uh, vibration plate assembly that attaches to the bottom of the pump. And it has rubber feet and suction cups and it makes the pump virtually um, silent. I also added a, um, an electrical cord strip and this strip allows me with the push of one button to uh, turn off everything that I want off during uh, feeding or, uh, or maintenance. When I'm doing maintenance on the tank, vacuuming, things like this, I want the heaters off and uh, because the water levels can drop in the sump, the heaters are controlled by a controller that is plugged into that strip. So the pump is turned off, the controller is turned off, and so is this power head over here. It is turned off as well. And uh, so what that does is now the water is nice and calm. And this is good for when I'm doing maintenance or uh, when I've decided to feed them a once a week treat consisting of frozen krill, which as you can see here, they, uh, they enjoy quite a bit. <laughs> they kind of uh, play keep away with it and uh, very often uh, stuff themselves like little pigs, taking uh, what looks like more than they could handle. But when you consider these are carnivores and usually can eat a fish that hangs out of their mouth, not unusual for them to eat this way. But wait, there's more. <laughs> I've had a recent surprise, a recent addition to the family. Let me share it with you. All right, here, take a look at this. Tell me what you think. Meet uh, Papa Redcap Lethernops, and this is his uh, his wife, Mrs. Redcap Lethernops, and their baby Fry. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm the uh, I'm the proud grandfather. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in, my friends. Certainly, be sure to comment, share, and uh, subscribe if you haven't already done so. You are very appreciated. Thank you so much for stopping by.